Nigeria currently generates about 5,000 megawatts of electricity for a population of over 200 million people. To put that figure in perspective, this is Hitro Airport in London, United Kingdom. It is powered by about 5,000 megawatts of electricity. Same amount the entire country of Nigeria produces. South Africa, with a population of about 61 million people, generates 40 gigawatts. That is 40,000 megawatts of electricity. But you know what is worse about Nigeria's situation? About 75% of electricity consumed in Nigeria comes from diesel and petrol power generators, with Nigerians having to spend between $16 billion to $22 billion annually on fueling and other power needs. Nigeria is reportedly the highest generator user globally, with 30 to 40 million generators. These generators produce 25,000 megawatts of power utilized in Nigeria, while the country's national electricity grid supplies less than 5,000 megawatts. Now, this is a huge problem because investigations have revealed that the Nigerian government has spent over 11 trillion naira on power since 1999. So, where did all that money go? Recent data suggests that about 78% of homes and industries in Nigeria have no access to power. So, how did the government squander 11 trillion naira of taxpayers' money on frivolous contracts, fraudulent projects, and many more without getting the country close to having stable electricity supply? Between 2015 and 2023, more than 200 factories have had to close shop in Nigeria as a result of poor power supply. The Manufacturers Association of Nigeria reported that manufacturing companies spent 144 billion naira on alternative sources of energy in 2022 alone. This is because power is an essential input in manufacturing. These companies commit between 30 to 40 percent of their expenditures to power. Now, when that figure rose from 58.82 billion naira in 2015 to 112.81 billion naira in 2022, some of the businesses started to close down because there just wasn't enough profit in it anymore to make it worth their while. So, the question then becomes, since we all agree that power is very important for the growth of any economy, what is stopping Nigeria from having a stable power supply? To understand the problem, we first need to break Nigeria's power sector into various moving parts. The Nigerian power sector is the industry that generates, transmits, and distributes electricity to consumers in Nigeria. This power sector has been structured into various segments for efficiency. Let me show you what I mean. These three buildings here represent Nigeria's power sector. This is the power generation segment. This is transmission, and this right here is distribution. Simply put, there are certain companies responsible for generating electricity in Nigeria. No, it's not NEPA. These companies here are called GENCOs, like generating companies. Their job is to produce electricity from various sources, such as hydro, gas, coal, and solar. After this electricity is generated, there are other companies responsible for taking the same electricity and sending it to another set of companies responsible for distribution. The company responsible for this transmission of electricity from source to distributors is known as the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN. It is tasked with maintaining what is known as the national grid. And then we have the distribution segment of the entire process, which comprises companies referred to as discos or distribution companies. They are responsible for selling this electricity to end users within their franchise areas. The federal government owns and operates six power generating companies that are connected to the national grid. In addition to the federal government owned Jenkos, there are also independent power producers known as IPPS that generate electricity for their own use or sell to the national grid or other customers. The discos or distribution companies buy this generated electricity and sell it to the final consumer. But for them to be able to do that, the transmission company needs to bring this generated electricity to them. But with all of these investments in power plants and other infrastructures, Nigerians are still suffering from blackouts. This next section explains why. 
In 2015, the Nigerian Senate constituted a committee to investigate the Nigerian power crisis. According to revelations from that Senate hearing, the administration of former President Olusegun Obasanjo reportedly spent $16 billion on power sector reforms between 1999 and 2007. His successor, late President Omar Musayaradwa, spent $5.37 billion, while President Goodluck Jonathan's administration spent $8.26 billion on the same power sector. So, between 1999 and 2015, the Nigerian government had spent over $29 billion on the power sector. Some of these investments were made into something called the National Integrated Power Project, NIPP. Former President Olusegun Obasanjo initiated the National Integrated Power Project in 2005, which aimed to build 10 gas-fired power plants across the country. The project was estimated to cost the nation $8.5 billion and was funded by the excess crude account, a savings account for oil revenues. However, the NIPP faced several challenges such as delays, contractual disputes, and poor quality of work. According to a report by the House of Representatives Committee on Power in 2008, only $3.7 billion of the $8.5 billion allocated for the NIPP was disbursed, and none of the power plants was completed or functional. The report also accused Obasanjo and some of his ministers and officials of inflating contracts, violating due process, and diverting funds meant for the power sector. Goodluck Jonathan, another former president, inherited the NIPP from Obasanjo and continued to fund it from the excess crude account. He also launched the Power Sector Reform Roadmap in 2010, which aimed to privatize the generation and distribution companies, that is the Jankos and Discos we talked about, and create a competitive electricity market. However, Jonathan's administration also failed to deliver on its promises of improved power supply. According to a report by the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERA, in 2017, the Jonathan's administration awarded fraudulent and ghost contracts, paid huge amounts of money for non-existent projects, and failed to account for the funds spent on the power sector. Findings by the International Center for Investigative Reporting revealed that between 2011 and 2018, the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation had released a capital sum of 1.1 trillion naira for power projects in the country. However, Many of these projects were either abandoned, poorly executed, or overpriced by the contractors. I need to do my utmost to make this happen, but you cannot do it alone. I need your support. I need your help to become president of Nigeria so that the government may come to serve you, so that it may bring relief to the broken and weary among us, and so that it may usher in a new Nigeria meant for us all. The Buhari years were not any different. After taking over from Jonathan in 2015, President Buhari promised to improve power supply in the country. But while his administration claimed investments in the industry increased significantly under his watch, the national grid collapsed a record 99 times under President Buhari. Between 2018 and 2022, Nigeria budgeted the sum of 1.6 trillion naira to the Ministry of Power. According to the country's budget document, the capital allocation to the power sector in 2022 stood at 299 billion naira. Capital investments in the sector between 2018 and 2022 stood at around 1.6 trillion naira. In 2023, the government budgeted the sum of 258 billion naira to the power sector alone, with capital expenditure taking 251 billion of that sum. All that investment. Yet, Nigerians continue to pay more money for less power supply. The National Bureau of Statistics disclosed that Nigerians, including companies and government agencies, paid a total of 828 billion naira for electricity in 2022 alone. But the growing concern is not that the bills are increasing, but that the supply keeps getting worse. Nigeria's available power generation capacity dropped by 981.8 megawatts between 2015 and August 2022. A power generation trend revealed that while available power generation capacity was 6,616.28 megawatts in 2015, it dropped to 5,634.47 megawatts in August 2022. Remember that Nigeria needs an estimated 25,000 megawatts to 40,000 megawatts of capacity 
to service over 200 million population. Yet, the country continues to produce less than 6,000 megawatts. You see, poor power supply in Nigeria has consequences. In fact, it has affected every industry in the country's economy. Poor power supply has been estimated to cost Nigeria about 5% of its gross domestic product annually. It also affects the productivity and competitiveness of businesses, especially small and medium enterprises, which rely on expensive and polluting generators to meet their energy needs. Nigeria needs to increase its generation capacity by building new power plants, rehabilitating existing ones, diversifying its energy mix and exploring its renewable energy potential. The country also needs to upgrade and expand its transmission and distribution networks by investing in new technologies, reducing losses, enhancing metering and billing systems and improving customer service. There's also the need to improve regulation of the power sector by ensuring transparency and accountability, two things that are lacking in Nigeria. In March 2023, President Muhammadu Buhari signed into law a constitutional amendment that allows states in Nigeria to license, generate, transmit, and distribute electricity in areas covered by the national grid. The constitutional amendment was welcomed by some stakeholders in the power sector who believe that it would improve the availability and reliability of electricity supply. They also think this will reduce pressure on the national grid. But the question is, will these reforms work? It's been a year since then. Maybe they need more time because from the look of things, we are yet to see any results. So let us know, how is the power crisis in Nigeria affecting you and your business? This is Declassified on New Central TV. I'm Jim Bella, and I'll see you in the next episode.